Hey guys, uh, first and foremost, I'd like you to uh, excuse the noise in the background. It is incredibly hot and my uh, dog Wilson is uh, overheating, so he's chilling. I should probably t uh, turn the air conditioning on. During the recording of this YouTube video, I had forgotten to mention the person who asked the uh, question. So shout outs to uh, underscore zooman underscore zero two on Instagram for asking me this question. Um, thank you so much. If you want your questions answered, if you have a specific question, then please message me on Instagram, DM me, and uh, I will answer your question in the next, next live stream. And I will record it and I'll put it on YouTube and mention you just like I have with Zoom Ad. Thank you so much. What happens, what has happened to you from, uh, what is your transition from year 12 or out of adolescence into adulthood? Um, and, and what was the journey like? So what happened in that time? What did I do? So long story short, life story short, I graduated in 2008, um, year 12 in a country town. And my mum said to me, you either get a job or go to uni. Now, year 11 and 12 for me, I didn't do ATAR. Back then it wasn't even called ATAR, okay boomer. Uh, it was called TEE. -E. And uh, year 11, at the start of year 11 I tried. I chose the subjects that I needed to, to do the TEE and uh, going for a high, um, high TE score, equivalent to ATAR. Listen! Stop dying. And uh, what happened was uh, halfway through the first semester of year 11, I was, um, yeah, I bombed out. I was like, nah, stuff that. I'm going to um, do general. And it wasn't a disappointment. It was more a relief um, because I wasn't really true to myself. I, I was also distracted. But anyway, long story short, I tend to over explain things a lot. And for some people that's valuable, but for some other people it's like, get to the point, man. Anyway, what happened was I finished school. Um, I got my waste certificate, which means I graduated year 12. And um, I decided to get a job because I didn't, I couldn't get into uni. I, I didn't know how to because I didn't do TE, ATAR. So I became a lifeguard at my local pool. And that's when I kind of spent a whole year doing that. I was also playing footy in my local competition and really just enjoying my first year of adulthood or as an 18 year old, you know, going out, um, having drinks, um, you know, meeting girls um, or chasing girls, but it wasn't really chasing girls because it was a country town and let's just say when you're in a country town, you kind of know everybody and Unless you like been with someone or you meet someone that you've never met before, it's super difficult. But plus, I wasn't really um, into that. I was heavily, heavily into Call of Duty. And that was probably the reason that I didn't um, succeed as much at school um, because I was too focused on video games. So at video games, I had football, I had my best mates mucking around and I also had my job. That's really it. Then after that, I got better at footy and I got picked up by Subiaco in uh, Perth and they asked me to come down to try out as, as a, a more senior player because I was too old for Colts. And uh, yeah, they said, you're, you're on the team and uh, it, that was really it. It was kind of like a cloudy time back then, but um, yeah, I just transitioned. So you know what, I'm moving to Perth. I'm moving to Perth, out of the country town. It was Kalgoorlie, by the way. Um, and uh, yeah, I moved there without much hesitation. The biggest problem or the biggest regret I had at that time was that I bought a really flashy Holden Commodore V8, like V-E-S-S, -S, if you know what that means. And that was, I was in debt straight out of moving out of home, which was my one mistake that I did. So everybody that's wanting to move out of home, make sure you're not in debt. If you're in debt and you move out of home, that's silly. Very, very silly. Don't get in debt.
the end. <laughs> so anyway, went to Perth, um, played my footy, and then started to kind of find myself in that way. Like, I wasn't good with girls. I wasn't really good with anything else. I was trying to find a job that I liked or that, that actually paid me money, um, can, like, ongoing. And it was more a secure job, a safe job. And I ended up being a laborer at a factory, creating window frames for a while. And uh, yeah, that was my transition into like my mid or my early 20s. Um, so I had that and then my footy. From there, I got my uh, personal training um, certificate. That's when I started to learn how to become a personal trainer because I didn't want to work in a factory anymore. So that was the first leap of faith I did. I sacrificed a secure job, which was soul crushing, soul destroying, for something that I found more enjoyable, which was personal training. Got my personal training job, got a gym job in a gym, where I met my, um, where I met a, a lot of people that I know now today, who are my best friends. Um, and then that's when I started to think about university. And yeah, that was my transition out of high school into young adult life and into my early 20s. So yeah, um, thanks for the question. It was awesome and I hope you had some value out of it. But um, honestly, if you guys are about to finish year 11 or year 12 and you're thinking about getting a job or you've, you've just finished school or you have finished school, maybe it's been a year, you have about 10, bloody even 20 years. I'm gonna say 10 because I've only been alive 10 years or 11 years now post high school. So I can only give you the advice that I've lived. But you have so much time to figure out what you wanna do. Like what I'm doing now, next year, like, I'm 29 next year and I'm still unsure of exactly what I, do, what I want to do. I have a secure job at a school. I have a permanent job that pays really well, that has rewarding things and good holidays, and it's fulfilling for me. I love teaching, I love the kids, I love the, I'm passionate for it. However, I feel like I am more passionate with photography and creating stuff and giving value at scale. Sort of like this, streaming to you guys, making a YouTube video to give you my experience, to put it out into the world and maybe two or three people will get something out of it. And if more, that's a bonus. I wanna see if I would rather do that than be a teacher because I feel like as a teacher, and I'm not saying I'm confined to one school, I can still do this uh, on the side, but it's so distracting. It's, I want to do this and this only, and I want to see if it's going to work out for me next year. So for you, being 17, 18, 19 years old, even if you're 20, 20, even if you're my age, even if you're 35 and you're not happy with where you're at, you still have time. You still have so much time to just go, hey, I'm going to give this a go. But there's more to that than just, I'm just going to give it a go. You need to make sure that you really, really want it. And that's it. A lot of you have been asking me about how I got famous on TikTok. A lot of people ask me how I um, gained a lot of followers, uh, how to get famous on TikTok. Now, just a disclaimer, I don't consider myself famous on TikTok at all. 40,000 followers is amazing, but to me, famous is um, getting booked to go places to talk or to do something there based, um, based off of who I am. That's what fame is. So until I hit that, I don't consider myself famous yet. But hey, shout outs to every single person that's following me and watching my stuff and giving me feedback. If you wanna know how I did it, this is how I did it. And I'm gonna start right back in April of this year when I downloaded TikTok for the first time and I uploaded one uh, specific video that I really liked that every one of my friends thought was funny and I uploaded it and without telling any of the kids, someone found it on TikTok 
and they spread it around the school and everybody was watching it. And I was just like, oh, wow, that was, that was quick. And, you know, it had about 100 views, 200 views on it. Then I started putting some random, random, like just real random, me playing with the app and testing it out and figuring out how to use it. And uh, not really much happened out of that. I didn't use hashtags, I didn't try or anything like that. I just like was mucking around. Then I started to upload a few more with a little bit more story behind them. Again, just for fun, purely just to muck around. Then some of my kids at school started noticing it a little bit more. Now, um, and yeah, so then after that, I started to yeah start to play around with it a little bit more, and um, I put up a video of me. Um, I did a compilation of things that kids say at school, and this video. Um, was the first viral video and I don't consider anything viral unless it unless it goes over a hundred thousand views uh, or 50,000 views now for me when this video hit 30,000 views in a matter of like a couple of days I was like wow wow that was cool um, yeah so what had happened was I had uploaded maybe 40 maybe 50 videos prior to that video of me just mucking around, testing it out, um, started putting hashtags in and um, and just kind of just feeling, getting a feel of the app and, and seeing what, what was out there. I also consumed a lot of stuff. I also started watching a lot of TikTok videos. And then an idea came to me when um, I saw a video when someone was like, these are the things that these people do. And I'm like, hmm. What if I make a funny one about the kids at school? So it was something to, about my life that I thought was funny and that's when I did it. And then it worked. So then I doubled down and I was like, okay, cool, let's do this. Um, let's see what else we can do. And I started doing teacher jokes and it was a bit of a hit and miss. I did another teacher, the, the things students say part two. That didn't get an, uh, as much um, attention as the first one, so I was like, okay, no problem. But then I just thought, stuff it, I'm just gonna keep making cool videos. I started following trends as well, and not just dance videos, not lip syncing stuff, just like trends that I thought were out there that were cool. Um, I started going on Reddit as well and finding ideas on there. Like, I'd look at memes on Reddit, and I would look at a meme and I'm like, okay, how do I make that meme into a video? So then what I did was I grabbed the meme, a random meme that I thought was really funny, and I would make a video version of that meme. Some, some older memes and like stuff like that. And it was probably not until about a hundred videos. I uploaded a hundred videos um, before things started to pick up a little bit. And then one day at the shops, I was like, you know what? I haven't made one particularly making fun of my height. I'm really tall. So I was walking through Woolworths and I said, I'm really tall. I can really see all of the uh, aisles in there. So uh, I made a TikTok video about me walking through the aisles. Some of you maybe not knew or know, bleh, know about that one. And that got 100,000. My first 100,000 view video was that one and it happened in a day. That morning when I was at school I saw the numbers go up um, climb so and I was on a bit of a higher from it so I decided to make another video in relation to me being tall and me being a teacher so I'm channeling specifically who I am and what I know and that's my advice to you if you want to get a lot of followers double down quadruple down on everything that you know and what you're about and what you're passionate about and just make videos on just that. Use the relevant hashtags based off of that. If you like anime, make funny anime jokes. If you like, um, thank you Nitro React for the stickers. If you like um, football, make football memes. Make funny jokes about that. If you want to talk about something, 
make it like that. Currently, TikTok is really popular with comedians, so comedy is the high one. So if you can make fun of yourself and accept that people will laugh at you and also with you, and if you can laugh at yourself as well, you're going to win, okay? Eventually, it took me 100 videos. So my advice to you guys, if you wanna get a lot of followers, is post stuff every day to do with you and only you. Don't pretend to be somebody else. Don't pretend to copy someone else um, all the time because people can pick up on that. So that's what I did. That's exactly what I did. Yes, I'm tall. Yes, I'm a teacher. But you have something unique about yourself. So if you want to have more attention on your TikTok or whatever social media thing you use and you want more followers, start posting videos about what you do, what you're interested in, what you're good at, something unique about you and put it at scale. Maybe you can marry the two together. So I married my height and my teaching together and that was a super successful thing, right? I did that more. I did that more and more and more and each video got more and more views. Then I did one at home here that was following a trend of when you type into Google something, um, when you make the Google thing type something up and you press the record button and it, and it speaks it. I was like, you're not too tall. You're not too tall. I didn't think it was super funny because it was super obvious. But then when I walked into the lamp, I was like, oh yeah, that was a funny one. That went super viral. That was 600,000 views. And then from there, I was like, okay, tall jokes. Okay, my height. Everything I've done, thought about towards my height, I'm going to do that. So whatever it is about you, you just have to keep posting. Now, a lot of you has asked me, how do I get famous? How do I get more followers? I want more followers. Can you shout me out? If you have five to 50 videos on your TikTok, that's not enough. You need to be posting two or three times a day, at least, at least, and more if you can. And don't care about what any, anyone else thinks. Don't care if it doesn't get enough um, views, enough likes, enough comments, enough shares. Just keep posting it. Just keep posting it. Use relevant hashtags. Look at the trends that are happening and make your own version catered to yourself. That's all I did. That's all I did. And I did that every day. And I replied to every single comment. BLSD underscore culture. Yes, I am a Gary V fan. Yes, you're absolutely correct. The reason why I started TikTok was Gary V said so. And I was like, you know what? He's right. I missed out on Instagram because I thought it was for kids when it first started. I was like, nah, Facebook's elite. This time I'm not gonna miss the opportunity because I can see the massive benefits in TikTok. And here I am, here I am, I've, I've capitalized on it. So there you have it, that's how you do it. So if you want to, if you wanna get more followers on um, TikTok, Instagram, anything, post every day and don't care. And don't care what the results are because the next thing that you need to learn is to have patience. You need to have patience because it won't happen straight away. If you post 10 videos in the next two, three days and all you've gotten is 20 likes, that's what happened to me. That's what happened to me. I got 10, 20 views, some videos, and I was like, oh, okay, cool, yeah, whatever. And now I'm getting consistently 2,000 to 3,000 views per video, worst case, and then the good ones that have gotten some more attention, they get the 10K mark, and then the, the better ones get 50K, and occasionally I get to 10,000K, okay? So hopefully you've taken something out of that. Post every single day, something about yourself, something that you're interested in, and something that you know a lot about, because there are people that will come, okay? What, got, what videos do you guys watch? You probably watch Minecraft videos. You probably watch Fortnite videos. You probably watch other famous YouTubers talk about things that you're interested in. Why don't you talk about it? Why don't you tell the world your perception, your perspective, your thoughts about the specific topic? Because people out there were like, oh, I agree with that person. I'm going to give him a follow. Someone, someone else will be like, I like this video. My friend will like this video too. And they will share it and they will both follow you. All of a sudden you have three followers. Now a lot of you may think, three followers, that's not many. It's better than zero. I, everybody starts at zero followers. Remember that. Then you start to grow. 
very slowly. Some people get super lucky. Some people have that personality. It's in their DNA. Some people grind and grind and grind and out until they get noticed. And that's what happens. But you've got to stay true to yourself. Otherwise, it becomes unsustainable. Because if you're somebody else in front of the camera, it may get become exhausting. Okay? Hope that helps, guys. But yeah, in summary, post all the time. I'm seeing a lot of you guys and girls wanting to be TikTok famous, but your, your accounts are on private. And hey, no disrespect to your parents. If that's what your parents want, if you want, they want your private account, then unfortunately, that's where you're, um, that's where you're stuck. But if your account's not on private and you're allowed to do it, post every single day, at least three to four videos. Make up a crazy idea. Even if you make your own version of someone else's, at least you're creating, okay? That's what it is. Enjoy the journey, have patience, and keep creating. What do you take for granted? So, um, as this is being recorded for YouTube, um, I'm also streaming it with the uh, TikTokers um, currently live right now. And some of them have responded with, they take their animals for granted, their parents, their teachers. Some have also said that um, they take for granted that they live in a first world country. Some interesting responses. For me, I take for granted probably um, the fact that I have been given so much opportunity. Um, and what I say by that is I'm not originally from a first world country and the fact that I am here in Australia and there's a lot of opportunity here in Australia for me, I think I've definitely taken for granted that exact thing. Um, but I'm turning it around and I've turned it around big time in the last couple of years. I'm no longer taking it for granted and I'm actually making the most of it. So um, yeah, that's my answer. Um, taking it for granted, I mean, I'm, I'm super blessed with the opportunities that I've been given. Um, my height, first and foremost, a lot of people ask me, um, is, it, is it cool? Is it good? Is it, uh, is it awesome being tall? For me, absolutely. I love being super tall. And um, like my fiance, um, she struggles with a little bit of social anxiety about her height. Um, she's six foot one and um, you know when people look at her uh, and at me they make comments and we can hear them but for me it doesn't bother me um, but at the same time it's like how how can I use that to my advantage so and I'm starting to figure that out which is really fun so height is definitely a good one and uh, and yeah that's it um, another thing I take for granted is, I just dropped my laptop, um, some, of the, some, of the some of the other opportunities that I've been given, like football, um, I took for granted, um, and there's been a lot of, um, oh, what else, what else, there's so many, there's so many opportunities, um, the networks that I'm a part of that I don't really utilize as much because I'm like, oh, they're there. I can use them anytime, but I really need to use them now. And what I mean by that is the people that can propel me forward further. I think I want to first and foremost do it on my own. But at the same time, it's not a bad thing asking for help because if you have people in the right places um, or meet people in the right places or, or even hustle to get to know people in the right places, you can get ahead with whatever you want to do. Um, and I'm not saying suck up to them. It's just be a good person to everyone and anyone because you never know who you may meet. And that's what I've taken for granted a lot of the time because there's so many people that I've met in my life so far that I've been like, wow, that guy's or girl is really up there and I can really use them or how get their help to um, propel my career forward so um, there's a lot more to that but uh, I think that summarizes it from this book the 2000 questions about me uh, the question is what is the most memorable time at school like memorable class uh, for me it would have been year 11 uh, 2007 I'm old um, English class and 
me and the boys, me and the lads, we sat at the back. I was one of those kids. Plus, I was tall back then too, so if I sat at the front, I was exposed and people couldn't see behind me and I was a big target to get stuff thrown at me. Uh, yeah, I was at one of those schools. Anyway, English. I forgot my teacher's name. She obviously wasn't as memorable, but um, I remember we all had like a little tiny crush on her, uh, schoolboy kind of crush. And we would kind of like be a little bit cheeky. And uh, um, yeah, we would, we would um, try and like express our love to her, but very subtly and without it being super obvious. And it was like, like we got very little work done um, at the start, but towards the end of the year, we all passed because it's year 11 and we needed to pass English. Um, but yeah, this teacher, she was about four foot 10, tiny as all, probably the tiniest person in the class. And um, she was, she was cute. And like year 11, you know, we were like starting to get into girls and stuff. And um, yeah, she was cute and she was young too. She would have been like 21, 22, um, but she was so cranky. Like anytime we would muck around, we would talk, we would start laughing. She would have that straight up strict voice. And um, yeah, we, we would laugh about it because she's so small and it was so funny. Like. She didn't, she clearly didn't want to be there because it was a country school. It was like a placement. Um, teachers go out to the country to do their time so they can have a permanency at a school um, back where they live. So I think it was that. Anyway, um, yeah, that class, like every time we came in, it was like, we did our work, we did our assignments, like we all did well. Um, but any chance we got to you know mess around a little bit we took it in a heartbeat and that was so fun final question for this one will be how have your priorities changed over time so me almost um, 29 years of age um, about 10 days away from my birthday actually and um, yeah I mean I'm kind of in sync with the decade as well. My age is kind of in sync because I was born in 1991. Um, but yeah, at the start of this decade, I my priorities were footy to get into AFL. I got into the waffle, so I ticked that box pretty quickly. And then I wanted to just get better at footy, play league, be noticed and make AFL. Now, three years into it, so 2013, at the end of 2013, I was not happy with where I was. Um, I just started up my own business, being a personal trainer, and I got convinced um, to giving university a try. So my priorities started shifting then. Um, at the start of 2014, I changed clubs. I was in a much happier place. I started uni and I started my own business and that was amazing. I have footage from back then of that transition. I cannot wait to share it because it's such good content. Then from there, what happened was I graduated uni. Um, I lost my passion for football. There's a lot of different things about that that I'm not gonna explain in this answer. But um, yeah, so I moved on from that. Graduated uni. Um, and then I met the love of my life, Sabine, and I got a permanent job as a school teacher. I got really serious into my photography and um, my creating uh, artistic side of creating content. And uh, now at the end of the decade, at the end of those 10 years of time, I have actually changed my priorities to work as First and foremost, helping Sabine however I possibly can because she's starting uni properly big time, full time next year. So I want to support her as much as I can and at the same time developing my photography, videography um, business. So that's my two priorities. So from, from an aspiring footy player to a, an entrepreneur, if you will, I don't really label myself as that just yet because I don't really 
no. But um, yeah, looking after me, myself, and my family, that's my priority right now. Um, but also staying happy with what I'm doing to achieve all of the above. So that's how my priorities have changed. Guys, thanks uh, for listening and watching and contributing, joining my live streams. You mean the world to me. Um, I get messages all the time now. It's ridiculous. Uh, it's been three months, almost three months since I've started to do um, TikTok a little bit more seriously. And um, it's barely been two months since I started streaming as well. So things have been, um, things have been going super well. And uh, I'd like to thank all of you again, as always. Um, almost uh, the end of the year now massive day for me today uh, you can see it in my other video but um, yeah thanks for tuning in and I'll see you on the next live but thanks